based on your experience working on the East Coast and West Coast in technology, what's the difference between the two cultures? So I, I, I've been lucky enough to live out in the East Coast, but also spend a ton of time on the West Coast. Actually, uh, my first two years at Salesforce, I spent a third of my time out there. Uh, wife and kids didn't like it too much, but it was a great, great learning experience just to witness how things operate out there without actually, of course, moving out there. And it's unbelievable in how people think about technology. Everyone was a developer at one point. Everybody was. Everybody was in technology. Everyone is a geek. They all loved it, whether you're the CEO of, of you know, of Google, Microsoft, you name it, across the board, Salesforce, any of the tech giants. Uh, that person was at one time, did develop software, uh, was, was a, is a monster geek, loves technology, uh, and that permeates all the way down. So you think about when you have a culture where every single executive is, loves technology and, and it has at one point you know, touched it and been close to it and actually done it themselves at some point in their career most likely, uh, that is why the technology kind of comes out and, and, and just has a different feel to it. It feels yeah. a lot more thoughtful, a lot more love that goes into it. Yeah. Um, there's also a big, a much, a much deeper attention to quality. Right. Uh, a lot of times, you know, when you're on the East Coast, and, and you know, I've been a few, a few of these startups and a few companies I, I've advised for, where um, a lot of times you go to, you know, they start talking about quality assurance, and you know, they're like, let's see if we can get some, you know, five dollar an hour guy or ten dollar an hour guy, and you're like, quality? That's your, that's the final line between you and the customer. That, that should be. The, the highest paid guy in right. a lot of cases in your engineering team, not the lowest paid guy. And that's in fact how it is out there. Uh, the quality assurance engineers that they hire in the West Coast are, are the best. They come from the best schools, the Stanford's, Carnegie Mellon's, MIT's. That's who, it, that's who does quality out there. As opposed to you know, some of the startups in the East Coast, it's, <laughs> it's a guy who's like an art major and he's just looking to pass some time because you know, he can't get a job or he's waiting right. for a screenplay to hit. You know, and, and that's the guy who's doing quality assurance. Um, that's a huge part of it. Uh, when you talk about product ownership and how someone looks at the product, a lot of times they'll split up product marketing from the product manager, or the product manager will be sitting under the marketing arm and the engineering arm will be sitting separate, which I think is completely the wrong way to do it. You need full ownership, someone who controls the entire experience. From the first time you hear about the product to the first time you come to the website to the first time you, you, you log in, you put your credit card in, you use it, you read the, the documentations on how to use it, your first experience, the first time you see the home screen, all that stuff is, is relevant. It's very important to, to have someone who owns that entire experience and organizationally a lot of times it'll get broken up out here. So whether you're talking about whether it's a love for, a love for the technology, that every tier of the organization has somehow touched technology at some point, whether it's the, the commitment to quality or a holistic view of the experience of using your product. Yeah. Those are the things that, that really separate uh, the two coasts. Now, of course, I'm sure I could find 10 startups in the city who act that way. But in my experience as a whole, that's what I've seen. I've seen that more times than not, sure. unfortunately.